For the look, for the rub, nigga, I gotta be safe. Let's get to the sports talk. And, 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 and do that and uh, talk about the Browns and the way things might might break for them in the second half. But all of that is moved to the side. In all of your time in the league, and you saw a lot and accomplished a lot. You ever seen anything like this? Never seen. I've never seen anything like how that. How do you react to it? The brotherhood <clears throat> that is. How do you react to seeing a guy do that? I would have lost my mind. Basically how the Pittsburgh Steelers office alignment did it. That's Pouncy. Pouncy yeah. and, and, and crew. That's exactly what I would have done because... What Miles Garrett did was inexcusable. The fact that you rip a guy's helmet off and then you hit him upside the head with the helmet. Scott, I've seen a lot of things in the National Football League during my 12-year career, but I've never seen something like that. I think every anytime a helmet comes off and, and is a skirmish, everyone freaks out. But isn't there something of a code in you when a guy loses his hat that you say, you're not going to hit him with your fist, let alone a helmet? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, usually when the helmet old? usually when the helmet comes off, everybody's like, whoa. Right. Okay, we need to chill. But I mean, he just literally took his helmet and hit him upside the head. To me, that's like assault. Right. Right. I, that's that's the first thing I, I you know I said to myself was, that's assault on the football field. And and I think that in moments like these, particularly given what we do, you it's gonna be a lot of fines and a lot of suspensions. Like Miles Garrett probably gonna miss a few games. Cause after he hit Mason Rudolph with that helmet, and, and, and bad enough that he already came off a concussion, like they gonna check and see if do he have one again because he got hit with the helmet hard, hard. And um it was already frustration going on as well. Already, already down 21-7. Then you got Miles Go I mean, Miles Garrett. Uh, the uh, the late tackle on Mason Rudolph that was started everything right there, and then Mason Rudolph tried to pull Miles Garrett uh, helmet off when they was uh, on the ground. He was they was fighting on the ground. Then Miles Garrett pulled him up, and then took his helmet off. And then while uh, backing up, then Mason Rudolph started charging. And then you see Miles Garrett hit him with a helmet. And then you got his Miles Garrett teammate coming in and hit Mason Rudolph from behind. It was just so much going on, and most of the players are gonna be missing. They gonna be missing on uh, some games. They gonna be suspended. You try to be measured, and you try to ask yourself what's a reasonable, what's a reasonable reaction. But I'm with you. I mean, he hit a man in the head with that. I mean, look, these things are heavy, man. Right. Like, I mean, I have no idea. If, if you don't know, like, this thing weighs a lot. It's a weapon. Right. And Miles Garrett is a big man. Yeah, that, that, I mean, Baker Mayfield said it more calmly than I'm saying it now. But, I mean, whatever the, whatever the fine or the suspension is, it's got to be severe because Miles Garrett has flirted with 15-yard penalties all year. That's one thing. That's dumb. This is, feels almost criminal to me. The, you... <laughs> You touched upon it already, okay? In the prime time game against the Jets, he had a couple personal foul penalties. Now, fast forward to this. You do something this stupid, you're Miles Garrett. You're in the middle of a playoff push. You're going to get suspended. You're the best player on their team, and now you're not going to be available. How? That's, that's the part of having a young team. You can't make mistakes like this. Well, you're already in a deep hole as it is. And you got to battle your way into a playoff spot. And now you're going to be missing games and not be able to help your team out. Y'all four and six. Y'all trying to make the playoff push, but you making mistakes like this. You got to be on the field to help your team out. Now you're going to be missing some games. And that's a hole in that defense. Without you right there pressuring the quarterback because... The mistake you made right there. I know that firsthand when it's a fight about to happen, but you got also got to think. We already built ourselves in this deep hole, and we for surely for surely digging ourselves out of it. But he made a, this move, and he will probably miss like three or four games. Probably more than that. You can't do this when you're the best player in that defense. With right along with, with Greedy, right along with Ward, right along with the good defense line, Richards. Like you 
you just can't do this. Like, when you're one of the best players on that team, you can't make these mistakes. Dumb as that. That's the same. That's what we've been talking about with the Cleveland Browns, how undisciplined the penalties, how, the penalty yardage, the amount of penalties that the Cleveland Browns have racked up. So now, instead of us talking about the Cleveland Browns getting a critical divisional win, right. everything's going to focus on Miles Garrett and Freddie Kitchens that he had control of the Cleveland Browns team. If you get an offsides, you get a you get a, a personal foul. Even that's one thing. This is this is wholly separate from that. This is an entirely different level of conversation. We want to welcome in John Perry, our officially uh, officiating expert and analyst. And and John, in a situation like this, w would the on field officiating crew be consulted by the league when the league is trying to sort of met out what ought to be done in terms of fine slash suspension? Well, the officials on the field will have nothing to do as far as suspensions or fines, but the league and using video based on the new rule, anytime there's a personal foul, they can get involved with ejection. I don't think we need video here. What a blemish uh, to end this football game. Great rivalry. It's always heated. We get that. But this crosses the line and it's just not a good visual for the national football league john w without question and just just to be clear here I, I understand they wouldn't be asked in terms of what 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 the fine or suspension should be i'm just asking would they be would they be asked for any clarity to, tr to try to provide a framework of what, what went on throughout the evening because there were a number of helmet to helmet shots is there anything that the league would be looking for that the, where the officiating crew could provide contact it's bad enough that y'all were already getting criticized for how y'all was playing. Can they make a push? And this is just adding on a lot of media attention. The steady they talking about y'all on the verge of making a push for a playoff, they gonna keep asking all your teammates about Mount Scary, the incident, how you feel about it. And that's gonna, gonna take everyone focus from what they need to be doing because that's all the media is going to ask them when they talk to every last one of these players. As far as the night went, that's all I'm asking. Oh, yeah, I think based on how this game ends, it's going to be dissected for several days, start to finish. Uh, conversations that took on the field, plays that were called, plays that were not called. And then, of course, the end of this football game with the helmet coming off, the assault on the head, Pouncey coming back, kicking and punching. There's a lot of things that they'll spend a great deal amount of time this week dissecting. John, you, you, you saw everything in your in your career, and I mean, we so, Super Bowls and all the rest, and you got there because of your level of acumen for what you did. You ever see anything like this in games that you officiated? Anything that, that rose to this level? No. We had a playoff game in 2016 with the Steelers and the Bengals. Everybody would recall that. Sure. We had a lot of issues in that football game. But nothing, nothing rose to the level of ripping off a player's helmet and continuing that action and throwing a punch, using it as a weapon on a football field. No, I've right, never, John, in 20 years, I've never seen it. All right, John, thank you so much for your time and your context. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streams,